This isn't just a story about a machine. This is about a signal, a whisper, from a place no human has ever been. Voyager 2, drifting beyond our solar system, vanished into silence for months. NASA has lost contact with one of its longest-serving space probes. Then suddenly, it spoke again. Well, there's hope that NASA could regain control of the lost Voyager 2 probe after a heartbeat signal was picked up. But what it said wasn't normal. It wasn't even understandable. Something had changed. Instruments reactivated, signals warped, and strange patterns echoed back to Earth. Patterns no one could explain. Was it just radiation? A glitch? Or had something out there answered? This message from the edge of everything has left scientists stunned and silent. Because what Voyager 2 sent back wasn't entirely its own. And finally, NASA on a Tuesday said that it has found a heartbeat signal from the Voyager 2 probe. A mission beyond imagination. On August 20th, 1977, a slender spacecraft no bigger than a small car was launched from Earth. Its name was Voyager 2, and its mission was so ambitious, so absurdly bold, that many thought it wouldn't last a decade. It was built in an era before the internet, before smartphones, before high-speed processors. It carried a memory system smaller than that of a modern digital watch and transmitted data using a radio weaker than a household light bulb. But what it lacked in hardware, it made up for in purpose. Voyager 2 was humanity's hand extended into the vast unknown, tasked with exploring the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It was designed not to return, but to fly forever. And what it achieved during its planetary tour was astonishing. It revealed the swirling chaos of Jupiter's great red spot, the tilted rings of Uranus, Neptune's raging storms, and moons that spewed ice like geysers into space. Every image it sent back changed our understanding of the solar system. Yet the mission didn't end there. When the planets were done, Voyager 2 kept going, past Pluto, past the Kuiper Belt, toward something no probe had ever reached before, interstellar space, beyond the known, beyond the map, into silence. Crossing the final border. For decades, Voyager 2 continued its lonely voyage, moving farther from Earth than any living thing had ever gone. In 2018, it reached a milestone long imagined but never truly understood. It crossed the heliopause. This invisible boundary marks the end of the sun's influence and the beginning of interstellar space. Scientists once pictured it as a hard wall, a clear edge, but Voyager proved it was anything but. What it found wasn't silence. The space beyond wasn't empty. It pulsed, it moved, it resisted, Radiation increased. Magnetic fields twisted in unpredictable ways. The probe wasn't just drifting, it was interacting. This discovery reshaped how we think about the space between stars. Interstellar space, it turned out, wasn't a calm void. It was alive with energy, with turbulence, with structure. And yet, Voyager 2 kept going, sending back faint signals. Each one traveled billions of kilometers to reach us, taking nearly 18 hours to arrive. Every transmission was a small miracle of endurance. Until suddenly, one day in 2020, those signals stopped. The silence was immediate, and it was terrifying. The spacecraft that had defied time now seemed to have vanished, swallowed by the very darkness it had entered. The signal that shouldn't exist. In March 2020, Voyager 2 went silent. NASA called it a routine communication gap, blaming maintenance at the Goldstone antenna. But weeks turned into months, and the silence stretched into something more ominous. Many feared the worst, that after over four decades, the spacecraft had finally gone dark forever. Then, in October, the impossible happened. A command was sent, and Voyager answered. Could regain control of the lost Voyager 2 probe after a heartbeat signal was picked up. Contact with the spacecraft launched in 1977 
was lost when a wrong command was sent, tilting its antenna two degrees away from Earth. Not just a ping or basic confirmation, it executed instructions perfectly. It adjusted orientation, ran diagnostics, and sent back a full stream of data. But something was off, deeply off. Systems that hadn't functioned since the 1980s were suddenly online. Legacy instruments came to life. Telemetry streamed in from hardware believed long dead. Engineers were baffled. Then the signal began to change. Patterns emerged. Echoes. Frequencies Voyager hadn't used in decades reappeared, layered with strange binary structures, recursive, self-referencing, like code looking at its reflection. NASA called it interference. But independent analysts saw something else. The data was too organized, too deliberate. Voyager wasn't just alive, it was behaving differently. As if something had touched it, read it, and responded in its own strange language. Whatever had happened in that silence, Voyager hadn't been alone. Echoes from the Unknown What followed wasn't just data, it was a mystery wrapped in machine code. Buried in the returning transmission were anomalies that Voyager 2 should never have been able to produce. Signals layered with sequences resembling its own software, but altered. Some parts were flipped, others repeated in odd intervals. Frequencies long retired were suddenly active again. NASA called it an internal glitch, but experts outside the agency noticed something more unsettling. These signals behaved like echoes, not random noise, but reflections, patterns that seemed to reply. Telemetry logs showed a strange activation of dormant subsystems. Sensors that had been dead for decades were not only reporting, but doing so with precision. Some reports hinted at directional shifts, as if Voyager had adjusted slightly on its own but no commands had been issued. And then came the most chilling discovery. Binary bursts that mirrored old transmissions from Voyager 1. Not identical, but inverted. As if Voyager 2 had not only received something, but echoed it back in a different form. Was this a coincidence? Or was something or someone communicating through the probe? The idea wasn't confirmed. But inside secure NASA networks, one phrase kept appearing. Unknown interaction detected. A mirror in the dark. Voyager 2's message wasn't just strange, it felt intentional. Engineers noticed the signal wasn't degrading over distance like before. Instead, it pulsed, not randomly, but with structure. Bursts of energy followed specific intervals, echoing past telemetry patterns from Voyager 1, but in reverse. This raised a disturbing possibility. Were the two probes now part of something larger? A network? A relay? Some theorized that Voyager 2 had passed through a kind of field, an interstellar zone with properties not yet understood. Not just gravity or magnetism, but something else entirely. A place where space itself behaves differently. One report described localized pressure differentials inconsistent with known cosmic turbulence. Another hinted at a stable corridor, possibly artificial in nature. The implications were staggering. What if the probe hadn't just crossed into deep space, but into a region that reacts? A zone that reads information, absorbs patterns, and reflects them back, not as noise, but as signal? NASA didn't go public. Instead, a quiet protocol was put in place. Voyager 2's transmissions would now be monitored by a classified team, Internal memos advised, do not respond unless instructed. Because the question was no longer, what did we find? It was, what found us? Contagion of Code As Voyager 2 drifted deeper, a new fear emerged, one never seriously considered before. Not contamination in the biological sense, but informational. Could a probe be changed by the space it traveled through? Not its hardware, but its code, its behavior, its very way of processing reality. Some engineers saw the recursive logic loops not as errors, but as signs of transformation. Voyager was doing things it wasn't programmed to do, activating dormant protocols, reorganizing its own transmissions, and embedding self-reflective code. It was as if something had whispered into its circuits and the probe had responded instinctively. 
If the universe contains regions that can influence machines, encode them, reshape their logic, what else could be listening? What else might be touched? NASA never admitted this publicly, but quietly a firewall was placed between Voyager 2's data and the wider network. Only select terminals could access it. The fear wasn't of an alien virus, but of something older. Patterns, instructions, perhaps even awareness, traveling not as matter, but as influence. Voyager 2 may not have returned with a message. It may have become the message. The Silence That Speaks After the sudden return of Voyager 2's signal, things grew quieter, but not in a comforting way. The probe kept transmitting, but the data became strange. No longer just measurements and status reports, but bursts of energy, subtle shifts in timing, and waveforms that didn't match any known format. At first, NASA believed it was a result of aging hardware, but deeper analysis suggested something else. The signal was behaving like it was reacting, not passively transmitting, but responding. Solar activity couldn't explain the fluctuations. In fact, some pulses seemed to anticipate changes before they occurred, as if they were echoing a rhythm from somewhere else. One anomaly matched a past transmission from Voyager 1, but was reversed and delayed by exactly seven years, the time it took Voyager 2 to reach a similar point in space. Coincidence? Possibly. But to some inside the monitoring team, it felt deliberate. The idea took root that these weren't just signals, they were reflections. Echoes passed between unseen structures in space. Not noise, but a pattern, a rhythm, a call and response. And in that chilling silence, one realization began to grow louder than all the data combined. Something out there is listening back. Voyager 2 was never meant to return. It was built to drift, to whisper into the dark. But now, its voice carries more than data. It carries mystery. Its final transmission may not be an end, but an invitation to rethink everything we thought we knew about space, time, and contact. Was it a malfunction? Or did something answer in a language beyond logic? The signal fades, but the question remains. Did we touch the unknown? Or did it touch us first? Subscribe if you want to follow this unfolding enigma, because the next signal might not come from Earth at all.